You ready? You ready? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Warrants' Let's Plays. Today, I'm bringing to you uh, my opinion as to what the best faction is to use against the guild boss in the game. To my returning viewers, thanks so much for your continued support. If you're new to the channel, thanks as well for stopping by. With nothing left to say, I'm Warrants and Let's Play. So first off, I want to say that in order to get definitive results on this, it would really require that you had all the... Um, heroes that you're using within the factions be max skilled and also have really good gear um, that's very important to get a definitive answer and that's difficult even um, since playing from global because i spread out my legendary skill crystals so i can't definitively um say you know for certain the cho uh, choice that i've come up with as the best faction is absolutely the best because it's difficult to focus on one hero to get them max skilled i don't think awakenings are as important but certainly max skills and good gear are with that being said let's move into what i believe the list should look like first off i'm only going to include the legendary lord skills of each faction as they provide additional benefits that the epics do not and we're going to rule out several factions right off the bat and i'm going to try to go through this fairly quick because i don't think it requires a lot of thought and i think universally we would all agree you can include the watch guard the watch guard is probably the worst faction in the game guys when it comes to damage and what you're trying to produce against the guild boss's damage who is really benefiting from leia's 30 percent damage increase and i'm not focusing on the healing i'm just simply talking about damage the only person really that's going to benefit from this because we know cratch is an absolute meme of the game you see i'm still grayed out luckily i've not got the cratch tax yet uh, but brienne brienne as an epic a great epic marksman might be the only person that would really benefit from that so we can cross them out the north throne same kind of deal but slightly different um what horrors provides is the survivability the sustainability to allow his allies to stay alive longer but there's really no damage dealers in here who are you going to use again nocturne one of the arguably best and slept on single target mages in the game is very very solid but he's also a dual faction with an infernal blast so you can also use him there he is really the only person you use as shamir again have not had shamir attacks yet either thankfully he's also a meme of the game that faction is not going to work curse called as much as i'd hate to say this as much as i love morgan i still want her she is not going to produce you the kind of results with this uh faction either for a guild boss because yes she provides continuous boost which i really love be sure to watch my top three um, lords videos to see how high i rated morgan um but uh, the boss can't be cc'd it's that simple so this uh bonus of 30 percent against a uh, enemy that's cc'd is irrelevant so null and void increases faction always uh, aoe damage which is great uh, that's what this faction focuses on but since aoe is not what you're after you're after single target aoe damage will be diminished damage because you're spreading it across a single target so we can't include them either esoteria order what else needs to be said here yes whenever uh they're deployed for the first time their rage is boosted by 30 percent if you have venema that's great uh gets them to their alt faster but really the only damage dealer here that you're going to use is uh arguably the best if not certainly one of the best single target mages in the game i would say it's between him and bjorna and that would be comet one unit's not going to produce the damage a team's going to produce chaos dominion I, I think this is a real simple one for me uh, i don't think i'll get much argument here yes they do an ass ton of damage as they lose um, health but this is a faction designed to die and the key and guild boss is keeping allies alive as much as possible yes cerberus has the upon death he produces the puddle thing or whatever but you want your allies to stay alive you don't want them to die to go into cooldown to then have to summon them again to do more damage uh unnameable is pretty simple you got ajax what else is there to be said uh so that leaves three factions nightmare council infernal blast star piercers first off third place nightmare council i love torador you see i have him he is a great lord but does ask for damage but he's a great lord just simply putting him in the lord position in your team comp 
not deploying him into battle. He produces an attack speed buff for all his allies. Also a 30% chance to land an extra hit, which really benefits someone like Salazar for sure because he attacks real fast with his basic. That's great. Uh, Wrath is a beast. Salazar is a beast. Uh, I'm pretty sure Arrogance is pretty beastly for a single target as well. Like They have really strong fighters, but I think that they pale in comparison to the damage they can produce. Uh, that the other two can provide. Second place, Star Piercers. The thing with Star Piercers and Morrigan, what I really like is not only does she increase the range of the allies like Lunari does, but as an added benefit, for every one tile away from the target, increase their damage by 5% up to 50%. And we're gonna jump into a guild fight real quick, and I'll show you uh, what that kind of means. The two heroes primarily that would benefit from this that I would see that I currently do have and they are absolute monsters against the boss would be Hex who I recently acquired and Silas. Oops, Silas. Silas. I need you to put, be put down. So let's pause this for a second. One, two, three, four. We can count about four tiles away. The cool thing about this is this is continuous damage. There's no parameter required here. There's no diminishing returns because the boss is never going to move towards you in this fight. He always stays in the same position. So this is a continuous 20% uh, bonus of damage throughout the entire battle. They don't have to pop an alt or anything like that. They just continuously get 20% more damage. Um, I would say that Calypso could benefit from this as well, perhaps Torio. I don't know what kind of damage Torio does against the guild boss, but uh, Calypso, her damage multipliers are pretty garbage, to be honest. I think she might be the worst marksman in the game. I recently summoned her, but it'd be worth uh, testing her out with good gear, with max skills to see what kind of damage she would produce. Um, but based on that fact, and, and the fact that Hex is also Infernal, so he's dual faction, that's what I'm going to settle on as what I believe is the absolute best faction in the game. And there's a couple of reasons for that, and I'll discuss that right now when we go back into the gallery. If we go into the gallery and we look at the Infernal Blast, okay, well, who does the Infernal Blast have? Well, they've got... Again, I believe uh, a very slept on single target mage that does great damage. I th I've never tried him in Guild Boss, but a couple times. I've never really paid attention to this damage, but I would bet it would be pretty decent. Zilla 2 is probably the goddess of Guild Boss at the moment. Cetrum, who I would argue, and please do leave a comment if you disagree with me and have someone else in mind, I think there is not a single hero in the game that can get through that boss's shields as fast as, um, um, as Cetrum, because especially if you have an A1, which I'm fortunate enough to have him, his A1 is amazing. It increases, um, I think, by 30% or 35% the damage he does to shielded targets, which the Gil Boss always puts that shield up. So he's doing 85% damage to the boss. He just absolutely nukes the boss's um, shield. And then you got Hex, who's just a beast. Recently realized um, from gearing him, not the greatest gear, only have like two skill ups in his legendary uh, in his uh, ultimate he is out doing damage from my Salazar my Silas and my Cetrum handily like 19 million damage to them doing like 10 or 11 and then the peace day resistance for this is they have Dolores so the thing here is that even though you'll get a continuous 20% increase even if you added Toriel for four units we're saying Silas Hex uh, uh, Toriel and Calypso Although it's a continuous 20% boost, I believe this is just better damage. So Twin Fiend, if you look at his alt, he already does quite a bit of damage on the alt. And then on top of that, he does focus fire. Faction allies accept healers, join forces to channel energy to the Lord for a powerful strike, regardless of their locations, which is crazy. The damage of the strike increases all the way up to 800% based on the participants. So that's a lot of increased damage. And even though it's... Uh, um, it's um, required uh, basically for him to activate his alt multiple times in the three minute battle against the boss. I believe that combined with Dolores, who provides a 40% inspiration boost for her alt in Graceful Dancing, um, that goes up to 60% uh, if you, like me, you're fortunate enough to have her A1, which I do. Um, that's a big boost. I mean, that's a big boost to damage, 60%. It is uh, dependent on them cycling through their alts, but I do believe they, with them cycling through their alts, the damage that they produce and the units that are benefiting from that uh, it just can't be denied. And I truly believe that Infernal Blast is the best um, faction to use, keeping in mind that 
um, guild boss is where we as players get the best rewards we can possibly get on a daily basis. I'm talking you have a chance to get legendary skill crystals, uh, you know, uh, legendary crystals um, to summon with, uh, rare crystals, diamonds. That's the best rewards that you're going to potentially get in the game so it's very important that we do discuss this uh, topic and have a debate about it to figure out which team is going to produce us the most damage so we increase our chance of getting the best rewards so that's my video i appreciate the hell out of each and every one of you guys for stopping by if you found the information helpful and informative do smash the like button for me also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and like i said leave comments get involved and let me know what you think about this uh, list and uh if you felt like uh, maybe i made a mistake maybe I should have valued a, you know, a faction higher than another faction. I'm certainly happy and excited to hear your responses. This has been Lawrence for Lawrence's Let's Play. Keep it locked right here for additional Watcher Realms content coming your way very soon. Nothing left to say. I'm Lawrence, and I'm out of here. Take care, everybody. <laughs>